Just focus on the fact that they have to find that the mandate is proper. In order to find that it's proper, they have to find that it doesn't convert the federal government into a government of unlimited authority. Yet, it completely negates state constitutions and your ability to put things in your state constitution if they uphold it. Yet, it entirely tramples on state sovereignty if they uphold it. Now, Ohio will be one of 20-some states that has some sort of a health care freedom amendment resolution or statute. Now, we will have the strongest on November 9th, but we will be one of 20-some states. So essentially what the federal government will have to tell the states is that state sovereignty is important, but you're all wrong and we're going to ignore you. And the more states that have this, the increasingly difficult, uh, it will be increasingly difficult in order to do that because uh, health care is an issue of state concern, and part of that test for propriety is, is it an issue of state concern? And Justice Kennedy is who we're playing to here. You know, what he said is that when testing propriety, uh, we look at whether the, the law would foreclose the states from experimenting and exercising their own judgment. Well, here's what we know. Any state in the union could have enacted a health care mandate over the last 225 years, right? Mm -hmm. One did it. One out of 225. Now, since 2006, none have done it. For the last five years, zero states have enacted them after Massachusetts. So this notion of states as a laboratory for experiment, well, the experiment speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. The citizens of each state have said no for 225 years, whether implicitly or explicitly. One state said yes, and it's not working out very well there. Nope. So the states seem to have spoken on this issue. However, we need to make those implicit statements more explicit, which is one of the reasons the health care freedom amendment is so important in sending that message to the Supreme <clears throat> Court. This isn't just us sitting around not thinking about the issue. We've thought about it, and we're not interested in what you're selling. Nope. So that's going to be that's going to be essential to the analysis. The notion of uh, a lack of propriety because of state sovereignty. But it's really not just that. Um, one of the components of the health care freedom that I think is most compelling is that what we do is federalize your right to protect yourself. And this is the part of the amendment that is wildly underappreciated and most misunderstood. And to understand how this works, this now picks up on that 14th Amendment thing that I never got to talk about last time I was in Cincinnati. And that is something called substantive due process. This is the notion that there are certain rights that you have that are so intricate to your liberty, although not explicitly in the Bill of Rights. And this comes through the Fifth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, and the Ninth Amendment. Um, so we all understand the idea of unenumerated rights. The, the idea is the federal government can do a number of things. They can't do what's in the Bill of Rights. They can't take away your freedom of speech. But it's not just the things that are explicit in the Bill of Rights. There are also these things that are so, so fundamentally wrapped up in your right to be free as a citizen that they can't, they can't be taken away. And this come to be known through uh, some historical mistakes, etc., as substantive due process. Can't take life, liberty, and property without due process of law. Um, substantive due process basically indicates that if you have a fundamental right, strict scrutiny is necessary, and, and you've got a right under the 14th Amendment of the federal constitution. Well, this can come from state rights. In other words, if you put a right to be free from mandates and free from single payer in your state constitution, and then you go to federal court arguing that you have a 14th Amendment right, vis-a-vis -vis the right in your state constitution, courts listen to that. So you are federalizing your protection in the rights analysis. Now, how does this work? This is like a two-hump camel. So everybody's talking about the United States Supreme Court case that's going on right now, right? But that's just the first hump. That's the question, does, does the government have a power to regulate you? So one of the things we've learned in the past is that even if the government has the power, and you still have a right, you still get to be free from that power. Uh, take flag burning regulations, for example. <laughs> the federal government has regulated flag burning under its commerce power in the past. And courts have said, yes, the federal government, in fact, can regulate flag burning under its commerce clause power. However, that does not end the inquiry, because you have a First Amendment right to burn the flag that then trumps Congress's power to regulate that. 
Well, we have the same thing here. Instead of the First Amendment, though, we're using the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments to protect your rights. So this is what's called a protected liberty interest, and it, it may arise from state law. The United States Supreme Court has said that over and over again, and if it's going to arise from state law, it's most likely to arise from the Bill of Rights in state constitutions. And when it arises there, it's more likely to arise when the citizens have gathered all the signatures themselves, put this on the ballot all by themselves, and passed it all by themselves. Nothing creates a stronger message that you, the citizens, intend to enshrine your right to be free from mandates as fundamental than doing all of that. And Ohio will be the only state in the country that has done all of that. Oklahoma and Arizona passed constitutional amendments, but they're not in the state's Bill of Rights. And secondly, the citizens didn't gather the signatures, the legislature put it on the ballot there. So we will have the absolute strongest claim, the strongest defenses in the country against Obamacare. Um, and interestingly, in understanding how, how this works more, we get to look at medical marijuana. This is the topic where this has been most litigated. Uh, over 10 states have passed medical marijuana laws by initiative. None have put them in the Constitution, and the litigation is sporadic and all over the place. But what we know, well, actually, let's look at two areas. Let's look, look at medical marijuana, and then we're going to look at the right to engage in homosexual sodomy in the home. Exciting stuff. You didn't think you were going to get that tonight, did you? Oh. That's, and that's why, I have, that's why we have the screen here, is actually for that second. Um, I'm glad it's really big. Um, use all of that. So on these two issues, 2004, Lawrence v. Texas, Lawrence v. Texas, the issue, can the state of Texas forbid homosexual sodomy in the privacy of one's own home? Well, it's a 5-4 decision written by Justice Kennedy, who is our target in this litigation, and what Justice Kennedy basically indicates is that most states have rejected the fact that states can reject this uh, activity or can criminalize this activity. And uh, let me make sure I find the term. Uh, there's a pattern of non-enforcement. Um, but the, the exact uh, emerging awareness model. So in 2004, Lawrence v. Texas, we, we saw the advent of the emerging awareness model. What this means is there is an emerging awareness amongst the many states. This is not something that should be criminalized, and that people do have a freedom to do this. So in other words, states got rid of their laws allowing this, or passed statutes, resolutions, etc., explicitly allowing this activity to occur without criminal penalty. So courts look at the trend amongst what states are doing. And what Justice Kennedy and the majority found in Lawrence v. Texas is that most states were moving in the direction of allowing this liberty, and therefore the Supreme Court was going to treat this as a fundamental right under the 14th Amendment for that analysis. In other words, what that means is the federal government, or the state government in this case, had to prove that the regulation was necessary to achieve a compelling interest and was narrowly tailored to do so. That is a very high standard to meet, and issues that are typically characterized as such laws that are characterized as such are typically struck down. So that's the position that